living in our communities all around this country. People are suffering, but the corporate media is not showing that suffering. People are suffering in their homes, in silence and isolation. We want to highlight those people out there that are suffering and somehow thinking it's their fault. It's not your fault. It's their fault. They should be blamed and they should start paying back. That money belongs to all of us. We've heard over the course of the last year that our wages are unsustainable. Our health care is unsustainable. Our pensions, because they took them to the casino, are unsustainable. Well, the bus drivers, the transit workers of America are here to join with the nurses when telling them that all of their tax cuts are unsustainable. It is not our pensions, it's their tax cuts. The Main Street contract for the American people is essentially a way to highlight the invisible suffering in our country. People are living in isolation. They think that somehow their foreclosure, their medical condition, their, um, their financial uh, problems are all brought on by themselves. And so we're out there with the Main Street campaign to highlight the fact that we need to take charge because it's the corporations who are at fault. You know, everyone's been very quiet. Everyone's been suffering in silence, and there's this kind of conspiracy of silence, actually. We're going to open that up, and we're going to say, tell us where it hurts. And that's what the nurses are starting to do, and they're telling the most profound stories. And they're going to be the agents, the voice for other people to come forward and to tell their stories. And we're, not, we're going to tell those stories very publicly. In my daily work, I have seen over the past, since our recession, I have seen the patient dynamics change. I have seen patients that come in with um, worry and fear that if we find something during their procedure and we have to send it to the lab, whether or not it's going to be billed that day because their insurance ends tomorrow and that's through COBRA, which there is no extension. I have seen patients that are cancer survivors, as I am, that are on the same medication that I am that have stated they have had to stop their preventative medication because they can no longer afford it. We have seen actually people that are sicker that don't have any preventative care now. They wait till they're very sick and normally we think of that in the elderly. It's more, it's even pediatric population where the kids are so sick that the parents can't afford to take them to the doctor but yet they know they can get free care if they go to the emergency room and you know they won't be denied. Where it's a doctor's office, you have to pay the bill. So yeah, we've seen an upswing in that, absolutely. And much sicker kids, much, much sicker kids for things that could be managed easily if they were able to have health insurance to pay for a doctor's visit. We see a lot of people come in with anxiety um, and you know, trying to pinpoint what's causing that anxiety. And it's tough. And a lot of it is unemployment, unable to um, supply their family with things they need, um, children that have come in that are stressed out, and they're stressed out because of their environment, uh, what they're living with at home. Uh, there's a lot of violence out there too, um, as people are deprived of, of the basics of life. What nurses have learned is that that patient in their bed is a product of their culture. So are they homeless? Do they have a job? Do they have health care? You know, what's, the, what's happening around their lives? When a nurse looks at a patient, she's not just looking at the patient's, you know, whatever the patient's symptom is, she's looking at their life. She's looking at that patient in the bed in the context of a life. A lot of companies and insurance, the politicians, they're all saying, you know, you need to re take responsibility for it. You need to buy health insurance. You need to, you know, eat a better diet. You need to get more exercise. All those things blaming the victim of this whole system of inadequate health care that is driven by profit and not by patients' needs. I work for the state, and so all of our inpatient facilities, everything's funded through the state budget. And when you take a look at the cuts that continue to happen, and the largest portion of our state budget is health and human services, that's where the first place they go. So you can't continue to make cuts in an area and expect everything to be okay. We can't be level funded or underfunded continually year after year and expect that you're going to be able to provide good care. It's like looking for champagne on a beer budget. You can't do it. You can't do it. How will we take this country?
country back. Yes, that's Wall Street. How will we take this country back? Yes, that's Wall Street. Money does not evaporate. It's still here. It's in the hands of fewer and fewer people. Wall Street should be grateful. We're just talking about a transaction tax. Some of us would like them to make restitution. Yeah. Corporate America pays the, the lowest share of GDP in taxes that they have in decades. And yet they've had two years of record profits. That doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem right. That they would have record profits and pay less than they've ever paid before. There's a financial transaction fee that we're going to have Wall Street pay that they paid in history. They paid it multiple times in the history of the United States. It's very American and it basically says, just like working people pay taxes on all of their purchases, that these yo-yos who buy and sell and buy and sell our country should pay a minimum tax on that. That money, that money, can a very minimum tax can amount to at least 350 billion dollars that can go back to our communities, that can go back to jobs, that can go back to health care. You have to understand why we call it a financial speculation tax. They start off in the morning and they bid up a stock a point and then they sell it and it drops and they bid it back up a dollar and, and you know a point and it drops. And they make money this way all day by driving it up and letting it drop. Normal people don't buy and sell stock like that. We buy it put it in a 401k or someplace and it's for our savings, for our, for our future. So you put a half a penny, uh, a share on that. The normal person doesn't even notice it. You don't even see it. The speculators, it will stop some of that because if they do it often enough, the, the bill would start to build up. But it would also help us raise revenue so that we can do the things that we're talking about. We're not saying the corporations won't be able to make money they will be. We're saying that they need to give something back. If working people and middle class people have paid enough taxes, have suffered enough, and all corporations have to do is to give a minimum amount back and we could essentially reconstruct our society. And I'm not just talking about mortars and bridges and all, and I'm not talking about just building bridges. I'm talking about the spirit of America, what it means to be an American, what it means to have hope, what it means to have buy-in, what it means to have community. I love the nurses. First of all, I've worked with them for, for a long, long time, and uh, they have a tre tremendous leader. Roseanne DeMora is a, a terrific leader. Uh, they're visionary. They've been organizing. Uh, they have tremendous trust with the American public. Uh, so they have a, a real role to play uh, to help us with that contract. And the fact that they are that conscious and not just focused on themselves is a real testament uh, to their solidarity and their understanding that there is more than just, I got mine. It's unless all of us have ours, no one has anything. The nurses are going to fix this by helping to rally across this nation, and not just nurses, but everybody else. We're going to have to work with all our brothers and sisters across this country to address all the issues, which is housing, food, health care, and, and fix the system. Ain't gonna let nobody gently 